How are you doing, everybody? Thank you very much to Western University. i got to lower this a little bit. Um, and, of course, all of you for coming here today. Um, uh, particularly, it is very important for me to get the message out about uh, Remembrance Day on the special 100th anniversary of the end of World War I. So when Blair reached out to me and said, George, people want to hear a story, of course, I thought right away, Army lecture, intro, main body closure. I am a Canadian veteran. I stand here uh, before you, and I'm very proud of that. My name is George Mayant. My medals represent service in Germany during the Cold War, the Gulf War, and the Bosnian War. So I've been to three wars with the Royal Canadian Regiment, stationed here in London, Ontario. Our mission in the Royal Canadian Regiment, and I know a lot of people don't like it, but is to close with and destroy the enemy. That's our job. The Canadian soldier means perfecting winter warfare in the regiment, so we spent many years in the mountains of Norway with Ace Mobile Force. My destiny was to be a Canadian soldier. I grew up poor in Toronto. I had a lot of brothers and sisters, and food was scarce, so you didn't think of yourself first. My mother died when I was six years old, and I filled that gap with reading stories about Canadians in the war. Reader's Digest, because I only like the facts. I was amazed by the heroics. Canadians at Vimy Ridge, Passchendaele, the Battle of Cambrai, Arras, St. Julien, Pilots like Billy Bishop, Roy Barker, General Curry, and McNaughton, Sam Hughes, extraordinary people. By 15, I was working in a factory in Toronto, and I gotta tell you, when I joined the military, it didn't do me very good. If you wanna be a colonel, you gotta graduate from Western. I spent most of my life as a corporal soldier in the RCR, and I was proud of that. I believed I was the next generation that Lieutenant Colonel John McRae mentioned in his poem, take up the quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch be yours to uh, hold it high. So over the next 14 years, I specialized in courses, or specialized in courses that would make me valuable on the battlefield. I was and still capable of deploying, operating many weapon systems in many different environments. Prof proficient in machine gun, anti-tank, explosive communications, winter warfare, reconnaissance, you name it. I believe like all of us, taxpayers deserve the best for their money. So I worked hard. Let's also keep in mind that we had a huge reputation to fulfill. Canadians have proved themselves in World War I, World War II, Korea. When I joined the forces, most of those veterans were Korean War veterans. They were tough on us. Moving into the main body, at 17 years old, I joined the forces. By 18, I was in the Army and pretty happy. I mean, after all, I came from a poor background. And here, they gave you food. You got dessert. I never seen dessert before. And two flavors. So I was very happy. I grew up in the back of an armored personnel carrier we called the Grizzly. Today they call it LAV, Light Armored Vehicle, and it's made right here in London, Ontario by General Dynamics Land Systems. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud that London has created and supplied the technology to the fighting soldier. I'm proud of my regiment, Canada's oldest infantry regiment, home, Wosley Barracks, London, Ontario. I was influenced by one of the greatest generations we will ever know, the men and women that served in the First World War. Over 200,000 Canadians killed or uh, wounded. I dedicated my retirement to ensuring they are not forgotten. My life was dedicating to be the best Canadian soldier possible. After all, we had a huge reputation to uphold. While posted in Germany, I made a point of visiting all Canadian war cemeteries. In fact, my wife Lydia and my son Andrew were just in France for the 100th anniversary of Vimy Ridge. By 1992, I was a changed man. The Gulf War was over. We had rolled into Sarajevo under fire, devastated by war. The people were starving and things looked helpless. That changed drastically when out of nowhere, the president of France landed at the airport. General McKenzie had no other choice but to send the Royal Canadian Regiment, your regiment, almost 500 soldiers and armored vehicles to secure the area immediately. For that, they won the Governor General's Award. When I got back to Germany, the wall came down and the end of the Cold War was reality. Posted back to Canada, I ended up in Petawawa, which was not nearly as appealing as Germany or the Forest City, I can tell you. <laughs> like many, I divorced and my children came to London. After years of begging, I finally got Area Support Unit London, Wosley Barracks. I asked the kids, kids, what are you guys doing for Remembrance Day? And they said, well, Dad, they put on John Lennon's song about all the people. I said, oh, okay. So I contacted the Thames Valley School Board and made it my responsibility to help educate Canadians about our history. Over the past 15 years, I've spoken to over 10,000 children about the importance of Remembrance Day and recognizing the sacrifice of 200,000 Canadians, 66 of them that were killed in action in the First World War. As the ambassador of the Memory Project, London, I presented all types of events. I volunteer and educate and 
uh, the public about the Royal Canadian Regiment's history here at the RCR Museum on Wosley Street, or, or sorry, at Oxford, on Oxford Street at Wosley Barracks. And I'm also the membership chair for the Royal Canadian Regiment Association London Branch. Over the past 10 years, I've volunteered as a veterans advocate and provide various forms of administrative guidance to veterans to help them through the veterans process with Veterans Affairs. In closing, learn more about Canadian history, attend a Remembrance Day service, and never forget their sacrifice. Here's just 10 quick uh, fast facts, uh, compliments of Veterans Affairs in the London Public Library about the First World War. Oh, let me get to that right now. Sorry, we're moving right along. And I should have been wearing my glasses. Starting off, number one, Canadians saw their first major action in Yeep, and that is in Belgium on April 22nd, 1915. Lieutenant Colonel John McCrae was inspired to write in Flanders Fields to honor his friend that died during the battle. The Battle of the Somme began in the early morning of July 1st, 1916. The 1st Newfoundland Regiment suffered especially heavy losses on that day. Of approximately 800 Newfoundlanders that went into that battle, only 68 were present the next day for roll call. The Battle of Vimy Ridge that's on the back of our $20 bill began on the morning of April 9, 1917 and ended four days later. It was the first time all four Canadian divisions fought as a Canadian Corps. Um, the Canadian victory at Vimy Ridge is considered to be a key point in the shaping of Canada's history. Canadians took part in the Battle of Passchendaele from October to November 1917. In a muddy corner of Belgium, Canadians overcame unimaginable hardships to capture this strategic village. More than 2,800 Canadian nurses' sisters served with the Canadian Army Medical Corps. Approximately 4,000 Aboriginal Canadians enlisted during the war. This rep near, represented nearly one-third of all Aboriginal Canadian men eligible to serve. Approximately 70 Canadians were awarded the Victoria Cross for most conspicuous bravery in the presence of the enemy during the First World War. More than 650,000 men and women from Canada and Newfoundland served during the First World War. More than 66,000 gave their lives and 172,000 were wounded. The fighting ended on November the 11th, 1918, 100 years ago, with the signing of the Armistice, the official, uh, or the war officially ended with the signing of the Treaty of Versailles in 1919. Lest we forget. Thank you very much, everybody.